Hello, today we are going to learn uh, the difference between antemortem and postmortem clots. Okay, so basics first. Antemortem means something that happens to the body before death, whereas postmortem is something that happens to the body after death. Okay, so let's write it down antemortem versus postmortem. We go one by one. Okay, the first category we are trying to learn is causes. So antemortem happens in the living individual. So the causes can be physiological. Physiological means uh, the normal functioning of the body. For example, clots are formed in the body uh, as a response as a response to vessel damage. Okay, and then some pathogen can infect and cause inflammation. Okay, so at the site of the inflammation, there can be the formation of the clot due to the damage to the endothelium there okay so yep that will be the antemortem clot and postmortem the person is dead okay so all these mechanisms are not working so why is the clot formed the clot is formed because of the gravity okay so like uh, if a person is laid in a posture after his death so the blood won't flow anymore because the heart is not pumping so the blood will start accumulating on a place uh, due to the action of gravity okay so gravity will cause the accumulation of blood and which leads to the formation of clot okay not cloth clot okay so second is morphology of the clot okay so antimortem clots are the normal clots in our body maybe there's a clot in my body right now who knows so that clot would be dry okay uh, it will be firm to touch and it will be granular okay because uh, the clothes are supposed to be dry okay they have to protect uh, uh, the underlying structure okay they cannot be wet otherwise it will look really bad okay so you can write uh, learn it through that way okay so antimortem normal clothes or clothes in the living individual are dry firm and granular okay and in the postmortem okay so these are not real i mean these are not the normal clothes like these okay so these will be like a really wet kind of clothes so wet is equals to shiny is equals to gelatinous gelatinous kind of clothes uh, which would be soft and rubbery okay just imagine the blood is flowing and it just settled on a place so it would be gelatinous right and it will be soft as well because there is no compaction of that cloth like these here so gelatinous soft and rubbery okay so third we can learn about the um, let's uh, distinguish in feature okay features like this point is the most important one i would say okay so in the antemortem clot we see the line of zahan okay so this is important line of zahan okay so what this means is uh, let me try to show you diagrams because diagrams are always better so for example if this is a clot and so okay okay so the clot will appear like this okay then what are these stuff okay so there are alternate lines of platelets okay so platelets are accumulated there we all know normal clots have platelets and then normal line of fibrin okay so these are normal component of the clot okay so these alternate line of platelet and fibrin are seen so this is platelet and this is fibrin so these are line of zahan this is important whereas in the postmortem clot what we see is one sec mm -hmm. okay so imagine this is the clot then we see two areas okay so there would be a lower area and the upper area so lower area is red whereas upper area is yellowish in color okay so lower area oops we go black this okay so this is the rbc accumulation of rbc basically okay because as i said uh, the gravity is helping them settle down so rbcs have settled down so on the lower part there is an accumulation of rbc even in the clot there is an accumulation of rbc okay <laughs> so clot is made by accumulation of rbc and inside the clot there is also an accumulation of rbc so the lower part contains red blood cells whereas the upper part is nothing but fat 
okay here there are no fibrins or platelet uh, you know why okay so basically chicken fat is yellowish in color so we call this fat as chicken fat so uh, we write it with red because it is important chicken fat and this is the normal rbc and we call it something as well so this is called the currant jelly c u w r n g jelly i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right or not but it's a jelly which is eaten in foreign i guess and that's red in color okay so currant jelly so now you know antimortem clot we have line of zahan postmortem clot we have chicken fat and okay both start with c so maybe it will make it easier to remember and then we have the shape okay let's learn about the shape can i scroll it down come on mm, never mind we will write it here <laughs> shape okay so for the antimortem clot the shape can be anything okay for example if there's the vessel and there's the injury so it will take a shape like this okay the, so the shape can be anything imagine the injury was this long then the shape would be like this so any shape can be taken by the anti-mortem clot whereas in post-mortem clot okay there's no injury there's not anything it's just the settling of the blood so normal vessel and blood is not flowing okay so the blood just accumulated here okay so this is basically this okay and this is basically this hmm. accumulated here so what said is key shape can be any shape in post anti-mortem clot whereas in post-mortem clot the clot takes up the shape of the vessel in which it is formed okay so this was a good difference and attachment to the cell wall okay so this is a good clot we know so attachment would be really good in this case okay whereas in this case it uh, there is no attachment it just stopped there okay so attachment is weak here in the postmortem clot okay and then this can be present anywhere in the body it depends on where i cut my skin okay i mean yeah so whereas in the postmortem will be uh, it will depend in the posture in which the person is laid okay for example if the person is laying like this so here can be the clot here can be the clot okay so you get it so work of gravity so the posture so yeah these were the basic difference not basic these were all the difference between antimortem and postmortem clot hope you understood i tried to make it a fast so it's not boring as other youtube videos take care bye bye